glad to have you. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us for the next 30 minutes because it's going to be a wonderful program. But I, I just want you to know we think about you a lot. We appreciate the interaction we can have with you, uh, whether you write to us or email or whatever, and thankful for you and hope that our programs are a blessing to you and instructive and educational and things that, those little things that tweak your life and make it better. Hope that's what it is. You're going to be glad you tuned in today because I have an author with me by the name of Joe Turnham. And I've been doing this 40 years and never quite had a book like this one that has impressed me as it has. It's called Leading from Our Knees. What a title, isn't that great? But this is a book for leadership and it gives you very minute, all the way through, 365 pages, one for each day of the year, on uh, concepts, precepts of leadership. Now, I've been in leadership a lot in my lifetime, and I was just telling Joe a while ago, I wish I had this when I started out. This is a blessing, and, and don't think for a minute that you're not a leader. Most people are in some way or another, and there are no greater leaders at all than parents. So I'm anxious for you to meet Joe and we'll talk about the book. And also our wonderful friends, Michael and Thomas, if you've seen them cook with Stephanie before, you know it's kind of a comedy routine. And they're with us, they're gonna make some uh, broccoli cheese soup. And, um, but before we go to them, I was thinking of the situation that people are, people are in today. My family's been blessed. Uh, as far as I know, only one person's not able to work. I mean, the job was just cut like that. The rest of us have worked, and I praise God for that, but there are a lot of people there that I know nothing about that are really hurting and struggling through this long period that we've had of kind of being, you know, locked down. And uh, what you need to realize is that the Lord hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will minister to you. He will meet your needs. And maybe we need to be reminded of that. So I want to offer you this book by Max Lucado, one of the greatest writers alive today. It's called Less Fret, More Faith. And we're offering these, this for any amount, uh, any gift you can send to the ministry, you know, to pay all the bills. That's what we're doing. And so... Uh, the address is on your screen as well as a telephone number for your credit card, 1-800-229-0059. And our address is box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll get it right out to you. It's per really important, important in these times to keep yourself in the faith, keep yourself in the thoughts of God and his word, and you'll get through it much, much better. Okay, here's... Um, Stephanie and the boys are going to teach you how to make broccoli cheese soup. Yeah, I am back with my very special guests, Michael and Thomas. They are from my church. I babysit them sometimes. They're friends. They're a hoot. I love them. So we brought them in to do some more recipes. Last time, if you remember, they did meatballs. They did Grammy's meatballs. What are we doing Grammy today? Balls. Bro broccoli, broccoli cheese, cheese soup. soup. Bro and these no, 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 just one show to right now. Broccoli cheese soup. <laughs> <laughs> No this is their grandmother's <laughs> recipe, is that correct? I think. Yeah. Okay. I think so, yeah. Okay, so we have a stick of butter that's already cooking, right? And then what are we going to put into that? Onions. onions. And onions. So, so that's about and you a gotta wait until they're I'm yellow. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Okay. you got to wait yeah. until they're yellow. I don't want you to get popped with hot um, okay. butter. Watch your you got to wait until they're yellow, okay, everybody? What's yellow? Um, yellow onions. Oh, oh, okay. I, this I got is, it. Okay, there you go. Stir that up. So that's a medium onion, right? And a stick of butter. We're going to cook fast. You can cook much slower and let all the flavors come together at home. But we don't have that much time, so we'll cook, cook faster. So he's sauteing onions in butter, right? And then what's going to be next? The broth. And this is a can of chicken broth, mm -hmm. right? About so one, very gently. 37 bowls. Okay, I'll do this part. I'm always saying get your kids in the kitchen because how much fun is it to make memories in the kitchen, right? A lot. Do you guys enjoy cooking? Yeah. Ooh. Do you guys cook a lot at home? Yeah. Mom doesn't let me cook. <laughs> Mom doesn't Careful. let me cook. No, 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 no. Mom doesn't let me cook. <laughs> okay, so butter, 
onion broth, right? I'm gonna mm -hmm. crank this up a little bit Ooh, because we want it to get hot. So you're gonna be very, very careful. You're not gonna flip the spoon or anything, right? And then like this, what's next? Oops, the, broccoli. the broccoli. The broccoli. It's going very this, hard. Oh, it's cut. Yeah, it's cut. I got frozen broccoli and I cooked it already. I heated up the chicken broth. I heated the milk because we're trying to make this go a little bit faster, okay. right? So this is broccoli. Oop, oop, careful. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So stir yeah, yeah, that up. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with this. So butter, onions, chicken broth, broccoli. This is so super simple, but it's a delicious, tasty soup. And if fall ever gets here, because it's like 110 degrees outside right now, but if fall ever gets here, this is going to be the go-to soup. You go get the bread from the store, the bowl breads, and you make bowls out of it. It's delicious, and uh, it's just good. Okay, so we're going to switch places, right? Now I um, get to cook. Just give me a few more seconds. <laughs> now I get to cook. Okay, so um. next. Okay. Okay, here we go. Get up here. <laughs> so what's next? Um, the cheese. Yeah. Cheese? I need my stool. Okay, get your stool. <laughs> my best friend. <laughs> Hello. Step up. There you go. Okay, so next is shredded cheese. Shredded right? cheese. Right, here's your spoon. Hello. And you're going to, listen, you're going to be gentle, okay? Because yes. I don't want you to get burnt. Thank you. My okay. Best friend. Okay, we're going to stir that up. Have you guys been having fun this summer? Yeah. Well, yeah. I see that you guys have a boat now. Yes. I call a catfish and a um, uh, I don't a know what the, a snapper. mangrove snapper. Wow. Are you have are you eating your fish or are you just putting them back? I, I putting would them back. I would be able to eat my mangrove snapper. I guess we're giving them mercy. They just didn't let us. Oh well. Okay. I guess, I guess we're well, giving them mercy. My mom caught the same thing that I did, and um, uh, it swallowed the hook. Oh, I, may I please put it in? Yeah. Do you want to put the garlic in? I think in? it does. Yeah. Okay, very gently, okay? We're being very gentle <laughs> today. Like, watch out. Watch out. This is garlic powder. Garlic. Right? About a tablespoon. Got to make sure it smells just like garlicky. Just like garlicky. So he's mixing. And then this is two cups of milk that I've heated milk. up. Need right? Milk. Ooh, key key okay. key I'll do this one. Trust me, just so we don't make a mess. Okay. Mix. Milk it makes everything good. Oh. It does. It's so good for you, right? It looks like eggs. It's good for your bones. It looks a lot like eggs. They're right? right? nice and strong. Okay. <laughs> and then the last ingredient is the cornstarch. It's called a slurry, right? A slurry. A slurry. So slurry. it's cornstarch. May I please put yeah. that in? Cornstarch and water. Can you do it very gently? Yes. Okay. Because I don't want anyone to get burnt today. That is not the really low. Let's go lower. There we go. Pour that in. And this is going to thicken it up nicely. Make it very good. Make it very <laughs> good, right? Do you guys ever get the bread bowls and make bread bowl soup? No. Yeah, my mom doesn't no. let me cook very often. She doesn't? I don't get to cook soup every every day. Not every day? Well, I like to cook soup. That's okay, so, so let's crank this up a little bit. Crank it. And let me just see if we're getting Gotta down to Crank it, boys. So <laughs> good. Now this can cook for a very long time, right? Yes. yes. And it can thicken up and all that broccoli can break down. It, it smells so good. Yeah, it it does smell us. so good. So I we're really gonna I really can't smell it, but <laughs> <laughs> So you're just saying it smells good? We're just gonna put a little bit of this in a bowl, okay? And Ooh, we're gonna smells. taste it and then we're gonna let it cook the rest of the way. I'm gonna then eat we've it got all. to go, okay? To get chocolate. So we're just gonna taste a little bit of the of the um I sauce, bet it's really hot. Broth. I bet it tastes good. Right here. Yummy, yummy for me. me Just me. a little tiny taste. Me. Because it's hot. Tell me if, it, if we came close. Careful. Oh, that's good. oh, that's good, right? We did good. So good? <laughs> it's really, really yummy. You get. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You can get this recipe. The ingredients so will come good. up on the screen. <laughs> the ingredients will come up on the screen, or you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope, and Wanda will get it right out to you. And um, they'll be back for more. I can guarantee that, and we'll see you next time. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers.
Okay, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Joe Turnham, and he has written an amazing book called Leading from Our Knees, and we will explain it as we go along, but um, when we talk about leadership, let me tell you, you still need this book anyway. It's just the greatest devotional with, loaded with scripture. And uh, it's quite an amazing book. Welcome, Joe, and congratulations on this. Well, thank you, and it's my honor to uh -huh. be with you yes. today. Yes. Now, you're from? I'm from Auburn, Alabama. And my boy is a preacher in Montgomery, Alabama. He's just up the road, as mm -hmm. we say in mm -hmm. Alabama. Just up yes. the road. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I, I'm blessed to have grown up in a, in a home of, of loving parents, and my parents were, were natural leaders. Uh, they were um, uh, students at Auburn University, fell in love uh, as World War II was beginning. Father went off uh, to war, was in the uh, World War II, came home, and my mom and dad raised uh, four of us in a little college town, Auburn, Alabama. Not a small college town anymore. Not but, at all. Uh, uh, we were raised in the church. We had a, a great childhood, and, and uh, they're, they're both gone now, but their memories... And, and their virtues are instilled in me, and many of them are in this book. Mm -hmm. And you are, give me your title again. I know it's I'm the economic director. Of director, e of director of Economic Development in, in, for the Macon County Economic Development Authority, and it's a, a community in East Alabama, and we work uh, between uh, the, the Georgia line and Montgomery, Alabama, mm -hmm. where, where your son lives. So, and, now, is that a political job? Well... You know, we, I mean, do we vote we, on it? Well, no, no, we okay. don't. We don't. We don't. Don't vote on it. But my stakeholders are elected officials, so uh, you, everything at some level is political. It's political. <laughs> so we all we all understand that, and I think in and we talk about that a bit in the book. But uh, uh, it's a calling to me. I've I've had a number of, of things in my career: family businesses, consulting, and and uh, doing business development. So this is this is a calling. It's something that I love to do, and and feel like I'm making an impact. I'm able to, to share my faith as I do it, so it's wonderful. Yes, and I, f I really feel this book is for anybody. I'm such a believer in devotionals. Mm -hmm. I've done them for years. I think I started out with Streams in the Desert. Absolutely, yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my parents had it and a number since, uh, and we offer some on here. Uh, but this is, a, this is a giant leap I think it would benefit anybody, although it does uh, deal with um, leadership. Uh, before we get into it, now, what does this uh, ec economic developer, what, what do you do? Well, we, our, our authority is responsible by legislative statute to recruit industry, retail, and to do uh, retention and also to do workforce development. We're in a very you know, global age of, of industry. We were big in the automotive sector in our community and with Hyundai and You Kia. try to entice We entice business. investment and we also nurture small businesses mm -hmm. with uh, men and women. Um, during the, uh, uh, the COVID era, we've had to help retail, small retailers and do business plans and, and do a lot of that. Do uh, you see really firsthand how a lot of people have hurt? Some businesses yes. won't come back. They won't. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, I think, permanently altered in some of those facets. Mm -hmm. so, That's very, um, very sad. Um, you say that crushing less, less or defeat, failure as well as the accolades of success develop character. So when you're complimented, that's a good thing. And then when you fall right on your face, that's a good thing. Yeah, they're our greatest teachers, but they can also be our, our greatest uh, adversaries. Mm -hmm. Sometimes accolade can, can lead to... Uh, self-indulgence or self-congratulations mm -hmm. and the loss of humility, that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And also uh, discouragement, frustration, uh, uh, Satan can take that and, and alter our mission. So, uh, and I tell everybody too, Arthur, I think it's important that if we do leadership of faith that we become participants in spiritual warfare, uh, not because we want to, but because that's what's part of the kingdom and it's part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. And you made a comment, I just I have to speak to this because early on that, that we're all leaders. If, mm -hmm. if you're at home, you're a parent, you're a grandparent, mm -hmm. if you have a prayer life, you're a leader. The greatest leaders are prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. So we're all leaders. We need to all understand, all your listeners, 
today that we're all leaders of faith. Is there a greater leader or should be than the father oh, in the home? Central. And central. Satan knows that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He knows that. And, you know, we try to, to compensate for that when dad's not around, the father's not there. But uh, And, and there, there are those of us and many men can take on those surrogate roles, and, and many times we mm -hmm. have to, but the fathers are instrumental, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I'd really like that to sink in, that that father. Uh, I wonder if a lot of fathers <clears throat> even think of themselves as a leader. Well, no, and then, and then there are fallen fathers, mm -hmm. and fallen fathers can be redeemed. Yes, they can. And I think sometimes the greatest lesson that we teach our children is when they see our own repentance mm -hmm. and our own redemption and coming back from failure. Many times we say, well, I could never be an effective father. I've done these things in my life. But but children that see a redeemed Amen. parent, oh, wow, the Holy Spirit can just, just take that and do so much with that. Absolutely. You just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> okay. Um, do you think there's ever been a time, I've never seen such hate, nastiness as is in my country right now because I remember the Second World War I remember when people were united and I, I remember when they worked together and that the political parties just didn't detest each other I remember all that but that's where we are right now um, do you think leadership maybe looking back in your research and all has ever been under greater scrutiny and if there's a little blip on, you know, on the radar in the past, and there's no forgiveness. So we'll just keep that on the front page. And well, and, and you know, I, I think we've had strife and envy in politics for eons, but mm -hmm. we, never had, we never had Twitter and Facebook and oh. Instagram. <laughs> I, you know, I always wonder if uh, Christ's uh, first miracle at the wedding of Cana, had, had that been on social media, what would have happened, you know? Uh, and so I, I think in the context of today, but yeah. I, I do think that it's time for uh, uh, those of us that, that, that want to see restoration in our country, uh, especially people of faith, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we need to find ways uh, and, and not, not let earthly institutions become our daily goal that we're all about the kingdom of heaven every day. Mm -hmm. And it ought to be mm -hmm. parties out the door, candidates out the door. It's, it's about the blood and the salvation mm -hmm. and the love of Christ and, and the story and the new covenant. that we, The new covenant needs to be our election Amen. in yeah. 2020. Amen. And, and, and evangelism. I want you to describe this book. I'm going to hold, hold it open. But here we've got scriptures and you really enlarge upon them. We do. Um, I haven't read all of them by any means. I looked at my birthday first. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one on addiction. Okay. <laughs> I don't have that problem. Uh, but how would you describe when you read one page in this each day of the year? Well, it's certainly a devotional, and it's a read through the scripture. So January 1st is Genesis, and then, you know, December 31st may be Revelations. But it's also a reference guide, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know Veterans Day, uh, Holy Week. It's got, it's got a ledger in the back you can reference and go back. And there are also faith categories, I think 47 faith categories, you know, loneliness and lust and envy and the, those kinds of things. And so you can go in there and pluck out any day, any devotional, and it'll have a different, different meaning, uh, prophecy and forgiveness and prayer. So it's really a reference book as much as a devotional. How long did it take you to write it? Uh, it was written over a period of about seven years, but yeah. uh, probably intensely about two and mm -hmm. a half years. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard for me to describe the book because even reading on one of them where the angel appeared to the shepherds, mm -hmm. you found leadership in that. And I did after you, after you wrote it, after I read it, you know. Um, and the vast amount of those things that go into leadership, I tell you whether you're a teacher, a preacher, I think every preacher ought to have this in his library for sure. Um, but a Sunday school teacher, don't ever think your little corner of leadership is 
obscure, you can get so much riches from this book. Well, and, and, and the thing is, is the angels appearing to the shepherds today would be angels appeared to Uber drivers. Angels <laughs> appeared to sanitation workers. Right, Angels right. appeared to those professions that are not. That nobody... Nobody went to leadership school in, mm -hmm. in, as a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that God uses all of us. And it's amazing in the book uh, that leaders are plucked out. They, they herded sheep. They, were, they did grain. They were fishermen. They were... They were not people uh, that went to rabbinical school necessarily. Mm -hmm. They were people that mm -hmm. God used. And I think God uses imperfect people so that the power and the majesty of God shines through those events and not so that the skills and the personality and the beauty, uh, even Christ's uh, countenance says there was nothing that, that made him comely to look at. Mm -hmm. Moses was a stutterer. So if, if your listeners stutter or they have... Uh, they're slow of speech. Welcome to the club. Mm -hmm. You can join Moses mm -hmm. and you can join the great leaders of all time. You mentioned, and I think it's been pointed out many times, that God really chose some odd people. Ooh. Well, you can look and say, God, you had a really better choice over here. Yes, you did. But you chose this one. He did. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I've been mad at David as much as I could love him in the Bible. Um, where he said against thee and thee only have I sinned. And I thought, okay, David, uh, what do we do about uh, the adultery and what do we do about the man that was killed and blah, 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 not a very good resume. And then it dawned on me that anything, any sin is against God. It is, it is. And, and David was a man after God's own heart. And if, if you know, David was an uh, accomplice to murder, he, he committed adultery, he numbered Israel. Yeah. Wasn't supposed to do Wasn't that. Wasn't that the worst thing he did <laughs> in the could, eyes of God? Could, could have been. I mean, I think it's like counting your votes before the election. <laughs> you never want to do that. And, and, you know, and I always look at Jonah, too. Jonah didn't want to be a leader. He, he hated the people of Nineveh. He wanted them to perish. Yeah. And God says, no, you're going to preach to them. And the people of yeah. Nineveh heard. They didn't hear Jonah. They heard the word of God through Jonah. Do you have a favorite leader in the Bible? Oh, I, I love Daniel a lot. Mm -hmm. I love I love Joseph of the Old Testament because, and I, I love the leaders that were jerked from their comfort zones. Daniel, taken out, taken to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, was made a eunuch, was, and he led where he was planted. Like him being kidnapped. Almost. He was kidnapped. Uh, Joseph was betrayed by his oh, own yes. brothers, and he's dying, and he's done all these things. He never. And retribution came back. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Yeah. And just people that, that were obedient. Uh, I love Dr. Luke. I, I, I love Luke a lot. Uh, who can't love Peter? You know, Peter's all of us. Well, he gets angry can. and he throws the Bible against the wall and then he comes back. And he's also channeling Satan. And then the next minute he's the, the rock upon <laughs> which Christ builds his church. That's all of Trust us. We're me, all imperfect. Them. <laughs> so we're all set up to be great leaders of mm -hmm. faith. If we... Well, um, I heard one preacher put it this way. There's Saul of Tarsus, and he's dragging Christians out, helping them get killed and whatever. And God looks down for him and says, I believe I'll choose him. Well, so, and you know, when I was thinking about the story of that the other day, and if you're Ananias and you're the person that has to tell the congregants that this uh, persecutor is not going to be <laughs> to welcome him in your home. You're like, oh my gosh, what, what's going on? And let's talk about ladies of faith because I know uh, you've been a, a lady of leadership in the faith. The, the Bible's full of them. I mean, mm -hmm. Hannah raises and prays and Samuel, the great prophet comes mm -hmm. and, you know, blessed art thou amongst mm -hmm. women, Mary, a, a teenage mm -hmm. girl mm -hmm. who finds herself pregnant with the Holy Spirit and Elizabeth and it just and. And, and, and the, you know, uh, Esther, you, you is, are you not made for such a time as this? Grandmama, aren't you made uh -huh. for such a time as this to help do these things in your own family? And, and sometimes you're just the prayer warrior and you pray your children and your grandchildren out of these great, yes. great we calamities. We try to encourage that on homekeepers. Um, I love Abigail. She was married to a oh, jerk. She was. She was. And, and what she, a classy. She, she saves him, and then he goes and has a heart attack, mm -hmm. and David is, and I name my daughter Abigail after the, the, the wonderful mm -hmm. leadership of Abigail. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Um, do we tend to idolize leadership too much? But, yes. But also on the other end, we're downright rude. There's something to be said for honoring the office. That's right of a governor or a president or someone, because God places them in authority whether we like them or not. Um, that's very, very clear in, in the New Testament. And uh, our culture's gotten so coarse. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, respect, respect for office. But not only that, the Bible says pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. You have to pray for people you didn't vote for. You have to... You know, many mm -hmm. times Absolutely. leaders of faith fail because we fail to pray mm -hmm. for leaders. Mm -hmm. And God, that, that, is, that is an admonition. We must do it. God tells us uh, mm -hmm. to do that. But, you know, and we see even in churches you get, uh, you get pastor worship or, or envy and you get, you, yes, you, you you get people's mm -hmm. almost like an idolatry in our mm -hmm. own church mm -hmm. that, that where, where we get there instead of lifting that pastor. Mm -hmm. Biggest divorce rate today is among mm -hmm. pastors and clergy. Oh, mm. um, we just have a couple of minutes, but you're going to be on the next program with me anyway. Yes. But uh, how do leaders navigate situations for there's, there's no rule, there's no book, there's nothing. No. And, and many times your choices are not among success and failure. They're among minimizing the damage and they're among being obedient to the call mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to win. King Josiah couldn't uh, rid the idols mm -hmm. of the kingdom, and ultimately his son failed, but he was obedient. I think leaders that be up are to be obedient to the call, and God will do the rest. Yes. Uh, we've had the website up for quite a while. You can get the book through that. Amazon, I'm sure. Amazon, uh, printed version, Kindle version, uh -huh. uh, or Leading from Leading Their from Knees. Leading from Their Knees, the best com. title I've seen in a long, long time. I urge you... I urge you to get it no matter what your life is like because it's a devotional. It's got 365 pages of wonderful scripture and then um, his remarks on it. It's something that can bless you no matter what station you are in life, whether you're a leader or not. And, and after I got into it a little bit, I decided everybody is a little bit of a leader. Uh, you might think you have no influence at all, but um, trust me, you do. Have it for the Lord. And please join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.